Howdy y'all, Mr. Kazi coming to you from beautiful Atascacita, Texas with another great chemistry lesson. And today you're going to learn about aqueous solutions, electrolytes, acids, bases, and salts. You're going to need your periodic table. You're going to need your list of polyatomic ions. And on the back of that, I believe we have solubility rules as well. Just go to the link that you see here on the page and get your copy. And you should already know about the periodic table, oxidation numbers, polyatomic ions, and chemical reactions. And if you have any trouble with any of these areas, you need to go and watch the videos on these first before you continue into the uh, area of aqueous solutions and solubility. What's so important about aqueous solutions? Well, many important chemical reactions occur in water, especially a lot of our biochemical uh, reactions that occur in our bodies or in the bodies of mammals or other animals. So, it's useful to know about substances that are soluble, and especially those that are soluble in water. First, we want to define what a solution is and solutions are homogeneous mixtures that are solute that would be like the sugar and the solvent which would be like the water in a sugar water uh, solution and since sugar is soluble in water we say it has a solubility and those are important things to understand and some things are much more soluble than others all right so what are aqueous solutions? Well, aqueous solutions are solutions that are, um, are in water, where water is the solvent. And that's because water is the universal solvent. More things dissolve in water than anything else. And we want to understand uh, these ideas about aqueous solutions. So, solutes that are soluble in water are uh, two categories. We have non-electrolytes and electrolytes. And non-electrolytes are substances whose aqueous solutions do not conduct electricity, like uh, sugar dissolved in water. You can dissolve sugar in water, that's an aqueous solution, but it does not conduct electricity, therefore it's a non-electrolyte. However, we also have electrolytes, and these are substances where the uh, solute dissolves in water, and they do conduct electricity. And we have strong electrolytes, which uh, conduct a lot of electricity. And we have very weak electrolytes that only conduct small amounts of electricity. And two uh, forms of electrolytes. We have electrolytes formed by dissociation and electrolytes formed by ionization. Now, dissociation is when an ionic solid separates into its ions, such as sodium chloride, which is uh, an ionic compound. And when put in water, it separates into sodium ions and chlorine ions. However, ionization is when a molecular compound, now remember molecular means covalent, forms ions in an aqueous solution. So when a molecular compound forms ions in an aqueous solution, like uh, hydrogen uh, chloride, when it's put in water, we get hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. That's ionization. We have strong electrolytes, which ionize or dissociate completely, like sodium chloride. Uh, and usually there are strong acids and strong bases and soluble salts are all strong electrolytes. So what is an acid? For our purposes, an acid uh, is a substance that releases hydrogen ions or hydronium ions in aqueous solutions. And there can be inorganic acids, such as hydrochloric acid. And there are organic acids that have the carboxyl group on it, like amino acids or uh, something like acetic acid. Now remember, strong acids ionize or dissociate completely. And we have seven common strong acids. Hydrochloric acid. We have hydrobromic acid. We have hydroiodic acid, we have nitric acid, we have perchloric acid, 
and chloric acid and sulfuric acid. Weak acids only ionize or dissociate slightly. And the common weak acids would be things like hydrofluoric acid, acetic acid, hydrocyanic acid, nitrous acid, carbonic acid, you find that in sodas, sulfurous acid, phosphoric acid, and oxalic acid. These are common weak acids that we need to get to know. Bases, substances that release OH ions in aqueous solutions, such as sodium hydroxide, which will become sodium ions and uh, hydroxide ions. And this is our base. Now remember, strong bases dissociate completely. And here are some common strong bases. Lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Weak bases are molecular substances, substances that are soluble in water, but form low concentrations of ions in solution. And so examples of weak bases would be ammonia, NH3, which uh, becomes NH4 uh, plus uh, OH, and that's ammonium hydroxide. That's uh, your basic ammonia cleaner. And then you have your amines, such as methyl uh, amine, caffeine, nicotine. These are all types of amines and considered weak bases. Salts are substances that contain a cation other than the hydrogen ion and an anion other than the hydroxide or oxide ion. Alkali metals plus halogens are very typical of salts and alkaline earth metals plus halogens are very typical of salts. Now remember the reaction between an acid and a base forms a salt. And a lot of times that's considered a neutralization reaction. And common salts would be things like lithium chloride, of course, sodium chloride, table salt, NABR, sodium bromide, uh, barium carbonate, uh, potassium perchlorate are all salts. So in recapping, we uh, looked at aqueous solutions and their importance. We looked at the different types of electrolytes we looked at strong acids and bases, and we looked at salts. And you might have to watch this again, but you want to be sure you understand these ideas so that you can interpret solubility rules. All right, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com, and I'll do my best to answer your questions when uh, I can. Check out mrkazi.com. You can also find PowerPoint videos and much, much more there. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lots of good videos and great information. Happy eyes, y'all.